Tony. You don't have enough troubles. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for all the differences between West Side Story 2021 and 1961. Tony, things aren't tough enough. Cop Doc, I'm in love, and you're not frightened. For this list, we'll be stacking Steven Spielberg's interpretation of the classic musical against its Best Picture winning predecessor, singling out the most notable changes. If you haven't seen either film, the stage version or Romeo and Juliet, expect something to get spoiled. Which version of West Side Story do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. More background for Maria and Bernardo. This is my first time in New York City. I want to be happy here. I want to make a life at home. While siblings Bernardo and Maria were well-defined characters in the 1961 film, the remake introduces a few new details that go a long way. She's not sure of herself, but she is very strong-minded, and she's not afraid to stand up to Bernardo, she's not afraid to stand up to Tony, she's not afraid to stand up to Anita. In addition to being the leader of the Sharks, Bernardo is a celebrated boxer as well. We see Bernardo's potential to be a contender, which makes his untimely downfall all the more tragic. Kind of bringing Tybalt as the Shakespearean character into Bernardo, because Tybalt is an incredible fighter. He's a master with a sword. He's vicious. He has this anger that he can't control, but he also loves his family. Although the siblings' parents are unseen in the original film, it's established that they're in America with their children. My mother and father are at this door. I didn't expect you to come by or I would have waited that. In Spielberg's film, it's implied that Maria, Bernardo, and Anita are paying the rent without parental supervision. As long as you're in my house, I'm a grown-up now, Bernardo. I'm gonna think for myself. This emphasizes Bernardo as both a brother and a father figure to Maria. After more than 60 years, the brother and sister also finally get a last name, Vasquez. Number 9. Tony and Maria's Date Tonight, tonight, there's only you tonight. What do you want? What do you do? What do you say? Both versions have the iconic balcony scene in common, but Tony and Maria's subsequent date switches locations. Wait, wait. Oh, why I call you. Rather than meeting at a bridal shop where they put on a pretend wedding, the star-crossed lovers take a train to the Cloisters and Church of the Intercession. All my life, it's like I'm always just about to fall off the world's tallest building. I stopped falling the second I saw you. While they once again fantasize about getting married, Tony and Maria are more realistically written here. Instead of having their heads in the clouds, the two take the time to discuss the rivalry revolving around their romance. We're fine. We're out of the world. You're out of your heads. We're 12 feet in the air. Deep down, both know that the relationship might not work out. Upon singing One Hand, One Heart, though, they walk away from the date feeling more hopeful. Their naivete is balanced with realism, establishing Tony and Maria as more believable characters. Number 8. The Changing Neighborhood The feud between the Jets and Sharks has always boiled down to territory, but Spielberg's film adds an extra layer. The neighborhood is being torn down to build nicer buildings and bring in a more upscale community. The Jets can't stop the construction workers, new business owners, and city officials from invading their stomping ground. However, they can stop the Sharks from taking over what's left. There was a neighborhood that was disappearing, and when you go back to the Shakespearean text, you don't really know why the Capulets and the Montagues are fighting. They say the fight is a, you know, a tale as old as time, we can't even remember why it started. Riff thus channels all of his fear and hate into bringing down the rival gang. More than ever, we see Riff as a big fish in a small pond. Even if Riff chases off the sharks in his water, he's clinging to a territory that's changing every day and will eventually be unrecognizable to him. You know, I wake up to everything I know either getting sold or wrecked or being taken over by people that I don't like, and they don't like me. And you know what's left out of all that? The Jets. Number 7. How the Rumble is Arranged The 
The Rumble has the same outcome in both films, but the build-up is different. In the original, the gangs meet at Doc's store to establish ground rules. We challenge you to a Rumble. All out, once and for all, except... On what terms? Whatever terms you're calling. In Spielberg's film, they arrange things in a bathroom. You see us coming, and we will keep coming. You sharks make like the rats in Skadet. Tony doesn't intervene to make it a fair fight this time, although he does try to prevent the rumble. Like the first film, Maria pleads with Tony to not let the fight happen. Tony, I am scared. There won't be any fight. Maria subsequently decides that it'd be better for Tony to stay away entirely. Nevertheless, Tony makes an effort in a unique rendition of Cool, where the Jets play keep away with a gun. Unable to reach Riff, Tony makes one last attempt at the Rumble, this time set in a salt shack, where violence inevitably ensues. Stand with us. Number six, more depth for Chino. How did you handle or approach taking on this character that was going to be so fateful in the story? Well, I think uh, it was a nice process that helped me grow a lot as an actor in person, thanks to the welcoming environment that everybody cultivated. Chino isn't given much development in the first film outside of being the other guy who Maria is expected to marry. But what did my fine brother bring me here? To marry Chino. Chino. When I look at Chino, nothing happens. Although Chino mentions he's working as an assistant, he's still seen fighting by Bernardo's side. The remake introduces Chino as Bernardo's shy and kind of dorky friend with a bright future. Are you ready? Tonight is about family. Bernardo wants Chino to give Maria a better life, distancing him and her from the sharks. Regardless, Chino wants to be a man of action like Bernardo. This gives Tony and Chino an interesting parallel. Do you want to start World War III? <laughs> Both have the potential, but neither can escape the gang world. Where Tony makes a genuine effort to leave this world behind, Chino goes looking for trouble and emerges more vengeful. How do you fire this gun, Chino? Just by pulling this little trigger? Number five. Tony's backstory fleshed out. Yeah, Tony gave us like an incredible amount of backstory, like like Pages. the stories of okay, when you were younger, you didn't have a place to sleep, and you kind of snuck in through the grate was open. You snuck into Doc's basement. Both films find Tony making an honest living at Doc's. In the 1961 film, it's briefly mentioned that the youth board compelled him to get a job. Me and Tony started the jet. So where is he? How come he takes a lousy, stinking job? <laughs> the youth boy corrupted him. <laughs> yeah, temporary sickness. Wait and see. Man, remember them fists the day we clobbered the emerald? The 2021 version provides more background information, revealing that Tony is on parole after spending a year in the pen. Here is this guy who does not like himself and is trying to actually better himself and change. And Riff's inability to see that, recognize that, or love him enough to let him go until the end, unfortunately. He was imprisoned for almost beating a rival gang member to death. Tony's afraid that if he returns to the Jets, he'll go one step further, which is ultimately what happens. Due to his darker backstory, Tony is even more resistant about attending the gym dance. Funny, I wasn't planning on showing up tonight. Like the original movie, Tony's confrontation with Riff is followed by his solo Something's Coming. This time, though, Valentina gives Tony a confidence boost, which leads to the song. This ain't casual like that. Oh. Number four, song order. There are going to be some real surprises in it, because Tony Kushner, who wrote the screenplay, has done some really imaginative and surprising things with the way the songs are used in the, in, the, in the story. The 1961 film tweaked the stage version song order, namely putting G Officer Krupke and I Feel Pretty before the rumble, and placing Cool after. The 2021 film sticks closer to the Broadway version, pushing Cool back to the first act, while I Feel Pretty follows the rumble. G. Officer Krupke remains in the first half, however. This makes sense, as having a comedic song after two major characters die always felt off in the stage musical. Spielberg also keeps things fresh by changing locations, moving America from the rooftops to the streets, 
G Officer Krupke from outside docks to the police department, and I Feel Pretty from the bridal shop to Gimbal's. I Feel Pretty is made more tragic knowing Maria's world is about to collapse. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. Number 3. Valentina fills dock roll. What's forever? Like, I want to be with you forever. You don't want to start maybe with I'd like to take you out to coffee? Signing on to direct West Side Story, Spielberg knew he had to involve Rita Moreno, who won an Oscar for playing Anita in the original film. Moreno was initially resistant, assuming it would be just a cameo. I don't want to tell you how to make your movie, but I don't do cameos. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and, and I think it would be very distracting. He said, no, 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 no. Tony Kushner is a big fan, which I didn't know. And he said he wrote a part for Val I love that name, Val oh, Valentina. Spielberg informed her, however, that screenwriter Tony Kushner created a new character named Valentina, Doc's widow. We wanted her knowledge and her wisdom and, you know, her incredible talent. Like Doc in the 1961 film and stage version, Valentina provides a neutral ground between the Jets and Sharks. For you, trouble is a relief. We gotta stand up to him, Doc. It's important. Fighting over a little piece of street is so important. To us it is. Valentina also has a better understanding of what Tony and Maria are going through, being a woman of Puerto Rican heritage who married a white man. Life matters even more than love. Moreno even gets to sing one of the most important songs, Somewhere, which can apply to Tony and Maria, as well as Valentina and her late husband. Because she did Somewhere live that day we shot the sequence. Somewhere. Number two, more of the Spanish language. You want to kill each other? Kill each other. But you ain't going to do it on my beat. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Would you mind translating that into Spanish? Although West Side Story is about culture clash, the original film is primarily in English with an occasional Spanish word thrown in. Buenas noches. You go get either. I will lock up. It's too early for noches. Buenas tardes. In the remake, Anita repeatedly reminds her fellow Puerto Ricans to practice their English. It's like I identify as Afro-Latino, and growing up, I didn't necessarily have access to my Hispanic heritage. Es el traje más ancho y más feo que he visto en mi vida. Mm, sí, traigo. Speak. English. On several occasions, though, they revert to their native language. It's a very relevant story. Other times, they shift between English and Spanish. In an effort to be inclusive, Spielberg chose not to have subtitles for the dialogue spoken in Spanish. Spielberg explained that he didn't want to give, quote, English the power over the Spanish. And Tony Kushner felt very liberal to do a lot of Spanish in the film, to have a lot of Spanish in the picture. And then it was our decision together that we would not subtitle it, mm -hmm. out of respect for the language. It's our second language in this nation. Even if you don't speak Spanish, the performances are so passionate that you can still read every emotion. While this is a testament to the acting, it also shows that the language barrier isn't as hard to overcome as some assume. I want to be with you forever. Quiero estar contigo para siempre. Quiero estar con, 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 contigo, with you, contigo. para siempre. Siempre. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, more diverse casting. But I will tell you this, I'm not black enough in certain circles, and I'm not Latina enough in others. And it, West Side Story, oddly enough, was one of the first experiences I've ever had where I felt Amazing. embraced by a community. While Robert Wise and Jerome Robbins made a timeless film, 
diversity is one aspect where the original fell short. Natalie Wood, whose parents were Russian, and George Chakiris, who's of Greek descent, wore makeup to appear Puerto Rican. They do not know this country any better than she does. And you do not know it at all. Girls here are free to have fun. She is in America now. Puerto Rico is in America now. Even Moreno, a Puerto Rico native, wore darker makeup. I used to hate that very dark makeup that they used on all the sharks. I mean, we were really all mostly one shade. And I said, God, I hate this makeup. Why does it have to be so dark? I said, I'm Puerto Rican. I said, why can't we be my color? With the remake, Spielberg wanted to represent New York's diversity, even adding a black character named Abe, played by Curtis Cook. But I will say what Abe does in this um, re-envisioning re or remake of West Side Story, it's the same story. They've just added a lot more color and a lot more black folk to it. And um, what you get to see him do is amazing and how it moves the story along, it's gonna change a lot of things. There are roughly 33 Puerto Rican characters in the film. According to Spielberg, at least 20 are specifically Puerto Rican or of Puerto Rican descent. While not every shark actor is Puerto Rican, Spielberg insisted that they all come from Latinx communities. This includes Maria's actress, Rachel Zegler, who's of Colombian descent on her mother's side. It was very formative for me to be able to walk onto set and talk to people who live in Puerto Rico, who are Afro-Latino. Look who I found. Boom! Yay! Yay! <laughs> it makes me super emotional, so I apologize. It's so important. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.